There have been a total of 26 total fossil Pokemon so far in the entirety of the Pokemon franchise. And today, I wish to explain each's backstory and what they're based on. Kanto introduced the most fossil Pokemon for a single generation, with five, those being the Ammonite line, the Kabuto line, and Aerodactyl. Let's start with Ammonite. Ammonite and Omastar are based on Ammonite, which were a species of cephalopods that went extinct over 66 million years ago. Ammonite fossils bear resemblance to the Helix fossil, which is the in-game item to revive an Ammonite. Kabuto is based on the horseshoe crab, which not extinct species, but has been thriving for over 250 million years, with little evolutionary change, often being credited as a living fossil. Horseshoe crabs are actually more closely related to spiders and scorpions than to regular crabs and lobsters. Kabutops is just an over-exaggerated horseshoe crab, but it could also be based on a further ancestor of the horseshoe crab, the Eurypterid, which were huge and had large claw appendages, which aren't exactly scythes, but it's the closest we've got. Aerodactyl is one of the few single-staged fossil Pokemon and is based on a variety of features from many different species of pterodactyls, and is currently the only fossil Pokemon that is able to Mega Evolve. You're able to receive Aerodactyl with the Old Amber, which presumably has Aerodactyl DNA inside, which is a direct parallel to Jurassic Park, where they revived dinosaurs using dinosaur blood in mosquitoes frozen in amber. A fun fact about Aerodactyl is that around 2014, a new genus of pterodactyl was discovered in Germany and was given the name Aerodactylus from the Pokemon. Next is Hoenn, which introduced four new fossil Pokemon. Let's start with Lilip and Cradle which are based on ancient invertebrates known as crinoids. Crinoids are still around today, but aren't nearly as large as they were 300 million years ago in the Paleozoic period. Crinoids are plant-looking animals that bury parts of themselves under the ocean floor. Crinoid fossils look like a flower, and you can see the parallels to Lilip's root fossil. Anorith and Almaldo are based on Anomalocaris, which are an extinct species of arthropods that went extinct approximately 488 million years ago, and were a victim of the Great Permian Extinction, otherwise known as the Great Dying, where a series of volcanic activity caused 96% of all ocean life to die out. While Anorith is super close looking to the Anomalocaris, with the bulging eyes and the many side wings to help it swim through the ocean, Armaldo, on the other hand, is more a cartoony representation of what a large one of the species could become. It also takes design elements from the likes of traditional Japanese kaijus by appearing more monster-like. Sinnoh introduced another four new fossil Pokemon, and the first gym leaders to use them, being Rourke and Byron, who both work in digging and mining professions, so it just kind of makes sense. But let's look at Cranidos and Rampardos first, who are based off the Pachycephalosaurus, which were herbivores that had short stubby arms and a large skull cap. They did fight with rivals among their own species, but they didn't use their skull head actually. Recent studies found they likely used their legs to fight, similar to how kangaroos duke it out. Shiodon and Bastiodon are also based on dinosaurs, being the Ceratopsians, who had a strong bone shield looking part to the top of its skull and many horns. Shiodon and Bastiodon are just these features but a little bit more exaggerated. Ceratopsians were wiped out in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, which is the one where the massive asteroid wiped out large chunks of animals and would eventually lead to the total extinction of dinosaurs. Unova introduced the Tirtuga line and the Arkan line. The Tirtuga line is based off ancient sea turtles, with Tirtuga being based off animals like the leatherback sea turtle, and Caracosta being based off the Archelon, which was a MASSIVE sea turtle. The two share many features with each other, like size of course, and shell design. Archon and Archaeops, on the other hand, are based off the Archaeopteryx, starting as a young one, and eventually becoming a fully grown one. These ancient crazy birds were smaller than one might think, being around 1 foot 8 inches across on average as an adult, and Archaeops is four times that size. As of right now, Kalos introduced the last two fossil Pokemon that are able to evolve, being the Tyrant line and the Amara line. Tyrant and Tyrantrum are both based on, well, the T-Rex, or a proper name, Tyrannosaurus Rex. By far the most famous dinosaur of all time, which lived in North America 
from 68 to 66 million years ago, until it too was wiped out by the asteroid. Tyrant is a baby Tyrannosaurus rex, while Tyrantrum is the adult, which shares the T-Rex's large feet, small arms, and massive jaw to crush its prey's bones. Amora and Aurorus, on the other hand, are based on the large, passive, herbivore sauropods that lived from 154 million years ago to 66 million years ago, another victim of the meteor. Many species of sauropods had sails, just like Aurorus, but none could do Aurorus's Aurora Borealis shenanigans. The last generation to include fossil Pokemon was Gen 8, which introduced four new fossils that were not evolutionary related to each other, but shared key aspects with each other. All the Gen 8 fossils are hybrid fossils, meaning that they are a combination of two different fossils to make one singular Pokemon. There are two fossils in the game for a front half, and two in the game for a back. The fossilized fish and bird are the two fronts, and the fossilized drake and dino are the two backs. Using them, you are able to receive a Dracovish, Dracozolt, Arctovish, and Arctozolt. The reason for this mechanic is actually really, really cool and well thought out. In the late 1800s, in the UK, which is where Galar is based off of, there was the start of the Bone Wars, which was when dinosaurs had reached a newfound rise in popularity, and there was a race to find the newest wacky and weird dinosaurs. This caused some fossils to be placed on the wrong body and created amalgamations like this, which directly parallels what we see in the Gen 8 games. Also, fun fact, the woman who revives the fossils for you is named Kara Liss, because she's careless. I just wanted to mention that because it's really funny. The fossil parts resemble classic dinosaurs' tails, underwater dinosaurs, and raptors. Fossil Pokemon have been a main class of Pokemon since the very beginning, and I'm sure that there will be plenty more introduced within the next couple of generations. Although I'm still holding out hope for a Megalodon fossil Pokemon. That would be undoubtedly my favorite Pokemon of all time if we have a massive ancient shark Pokemon. Just, whoa. If you enjoyed the video, chomp on that subscribe button, and I'll see you later.